<laughs> you know what comes after Taco Tuesday, Jack? <laughs> Ceviche Wednesday. <laughs> okay, don't try to make that a thing. I don't, I don't I think, think that's ever happened. I think it's going to become a <laughs> thing. It's not happening. <laughs> Jack, I'm two steps ahead of you. I already got Thursday mapped out, too. This is Nick. This is Jack. It's Tuesday, T-Boy, Tuesday, May 16th. And today's pod is the best one yet. It is a T-Boy, Jack. Good news. Stock markets ended their losing streak yesterday. Stocks rose a tad. Not too shabby, Jack, and I'll take it. In the meantime, Jack, first story, what do we got? The latest Zelda video game just launched on Nintendo last week. Yeti Zelda may be the most lucrative character on Earth. Middle Earth. For our... (laughs) (laughs) For our second story, a survey shows that more Americans right now are satisfied with their jobs than ever before. Jack, that means you and I got to talk about what we got to talk about. And what is that? The big stay. The big stay. And our third and final story is Vice. Vice is the latest digital media icon to file for bankruptcy. Its numbers on social media were huge, but its financial numbers... We're not. But Yetis, before we hit that wonderful mix. The perfect mix for a T-Boy Tuesday, Jack. I love this mix. Goodbye, John. Hello, Elijah. Goodbye, Jane. Hello, Luna. Yetis, we just got the list of the most popular baby names in America for 2022. The first choices for the first names. The Social Security Administration whips up this list every year. It's a really nice tradition. Turns out Social Security has been keeping track of baby names since 1880. Yeah, back when Ulysses was cool. Back when Agatha was trending. Today, you don't see many Ulysses. You don't see many Agathas. What are the top five names for baby boys last year, Nate. Jack, that would be Liam, Noah, Oliver, James, and Elijah. It's actually the sixth year in a row that Liam is the most popular boy's name. Not too shabby. Let's go, Liam. And the top five names for girls, what were they last year? Jack, that would be Olivia, Emma, Charlotte, Amelia, and Sophia. It's the fourth year in a row that Olivia is the most popular girl's name. Olivia! There we go. You're going to have some classmates. Maybe you should date Liam. But there's a funny theme that Nick and I noticed with the baby names. Yes, there is, Jack. The biggest influence on baby name popularity seems to be TV. Yeah, these names that are streaming are names that are trending. Now, this may sound familiar because uh, it's the same thing with pets. (laughs) Yeah, Jack and I told you six months ago that pet names were also influenced by TV names. That's why the fastest growing boy name right now is Dutton. Dutton at as in John Dutton, the rancher dad on Yellowstone. And the newest name to hit the top 40 for boy names, it's Maverick. Maverick, as in Top Gun Maverick, Tom Cruise. How about Eloise, Violet, Penelope? All of those are in the top 50, and all of those are characters on Bridgerton. Nick and I are shocked that Wom's Gam wasn't <laughs> was on the list. I mean, Jack, is Zava too European or what? <laughs> Zava is too European, Nick. Yet he's for T-Boy Tuesday, we want to know from you. What TV-inspired baby names should we be seeing? What TV-inspired baby names were popping when you were born? Actually, Jack, Molly and I haven't picked out first names yet. We could be crowdsourcing a first baby name right now, boy or girl. Yetis, what TV-inspired baby names should Nick name his kid, who we're not sure if it's a boy or a girl? Honestly, roll with anything. HBO Max, can you sponsor this name? The Yetis, the way Nick and I see it, you could come up with a kid name yourself. (laughs) Or you could just let the writers over at Netflix do it. For you. That's why the best baby name is Yes, Jack. Ta-dum. Let me introduce you to my nephew. <laughs> Skip intro. <laughs> hit us up at T-Boy Pod. Jack and I will hit our three stories. Fifteen years before this song, two boys from the Northeast met in the dorm. They had an idea to cause a cultural storm. It's the best one yet, but the best is the norm. Jack, Nick, that's it. I don't even think they need to practice. 50%, that's a fat tip. T-Boy City on your at list. If you know, you know, cause we ready to go. We can't wait no more, so just start the show. Start the show. For our first story, Nintendo's most important game ever may not be Super Mario. It may actually be... Zelda. How big is Zelda's video game business? How big is Jack? It's bigger than Star Wars. Yeah, we're going to explain that one. In the meantime, though, when Americans think of Nintendo, Jack, we tend to think about the Italian plumber, don't we? We think of Super Mario who's based in Brooklyn and has a brother named Luigi. Yeah, he paved a path to a profitable prosperity <laughs> thanks to plumbing. That's what Mario did. That's right. But when you think of Nintendo, 
You might think of Zelda, too. Right, because Zelda is the Ryan Gosling to <laughs> Super Mario's Rachel McAdams. <laughs> Nick and I jumped in T-Boy style. The Mario Brothers have under 200,000 followers on Reddit. Jack, how many followers does Zelda have on Reddit? Ten times that many. Zelda has two million super fans commenting about Zelda on Reddit. By the way, Robin Williams named his daughter Zelda after the video game. Because starting in 1986 with Legends of Zelda, Zelda has become the number two most important game for Nintendo. And now, Yetis, maybe you've played Zelda, maybe you haven't. If you haven't, the plot is... You've seen the plot before. This is not an original plot, right, Jack? There's a princess named Zelda who must be saved from a nasty, evil creature named Ganondorf. Yeah, this has happened one or two times <laughs> in past storytelling. And who's going to save Princess Zelda? Who, Jack? You are. The person playing the video game through the first person avatar, a mute character named Link. But here's the news on Zelda. On Friday, Zelda's newest video game just dropped and the numbers were serious. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, which is what the latest game is called, scored a 96 on the gamer review website. This is a big deal because this is the highest rated game ever and it just dropped. So it looks like Zelda is going to be a huge, smashing financial success. But here's why Jack and I had to pause the pod and make this a story. Jack and I were wondering, what does success mean in the video game industry? What is a huge financial smashing success for video games? Like, how much money do video games make? Because there is no clear number that's associated with video games. There is no clear price point. Unless you play video games or invest in video game companies, it's hard to measure success of a video game. Honestly, video games can feel like the metric system, like kilometers, liters. Like, you honestly do not really know what those are. So Nick and I decided we're going to compare the video game business to a business that you actually understand. Jack and I decided we're going to compare video game sales to box office movie sales. Once we convert video game sales to box office sales, it becomes clear. Once video game sales are converted from kilograms to pounds, <laughs> from meters to inches, that's 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 when you're going to understand. Them. And that's when you're going to understand that the force is strong with Zelda. We ran the numbers and uh, Jack, let's hit the takeaway. So Jack, what's the takeaway for our buddies over at Nintendo? Zelda will make more money than the last three Star Wars episodes did Combined. Combined. Yetis, the previous Zelda, Breath of the Wild, sold 30 million copies. The new Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, is expected to sell at least double that many. Okay, ipso facto, Jack, let's say that this new Zelda video game sells 60 million copies at $70 per download. That is so much money. That's $4.2 billion in revenues for Nintendo. Also known as so much money. That is so much money that it's more than the last three Star Wars episodes, episodes seven, eight, and nine, combined. Yeah, that is what Jack and I are saying here is that Link, Zelda, and Ganon are making more than three times the money of Luke, Darth, and Obi-Wan. Now, we should point out Star Wars is better at franchising than Zelda is. Star Wars knows how to stick lightsabers in a million kids' hands, and they got a theme park, and they got a lot of toys. They got two theme parks. But Nintendo gets to keep 100% of its video game sales. Lucasfilm only keeps half of their box office sales. So, besties, when it comes to awareness, Star Wars is is bigger than Zelda. But when it comes to money, Zelda is bigger than Star Wars. There is big money in video games. For our second story, a shocking thing is going on at work across America. Job satisfaction is at its highest level in decades. Which is why we're about to enter the big stay. The big stay. But before we jump in T-Boy style, Jack, can we talk about uh, the Bare Minimum Monday? Yetis, have you heard of Bare Minimum Mondays? Bare Minimum Mondays is like the next thing after quiet quitting. Bare Minimum Mondays is what it sounds like. It is when you do the bare minimum <laughs> on the Monday. You schedule one meeting, two meeting tops, and you show up just so people see you and then you leave. I'm going to have to cancel that 2 p.m. because I have a 9 a.m. <laughs> it basically turns a five-day work week into your own personal four and a half day work week. Because besties to ease the Sunday scary, some are advocating for a bare minimum Mondays to like ease into the work week. Yeah, I mean, mass layoffs are depressing. They're scary. And recession worries, they're stressful to everyone. Plus you hear that slack noise. Ah, that is a scary noise. You hear that noise? That's a scary noise. <laughs> Plus, we still have the inflation situation. Like if your latte costs double digits, you're kind of annoyed that your boss isn't paying you more. So some people are responding to all that 
with Bare Minimum Mondays. Bare Minimum Mondays. You clock in at 10 o'clock and then you clock out at 3 p.m. for Pilates. With a two-hour lunch in between. Must be nice. Bare Minimum Monday is a sign that people don't want to be at work as much. So on the surface, Yetis, Jack and I are looking at this and we're like, hey, it doesn't seem like people are that happy in their jobs right now. But then we got this report. We got data that shows the exact opposite of that. Get this. According to the conference board, job satisfaction is at a 35 year high. A record 62% of us Americans were either satisfied or very satisfied with the jobs we have right now. A record 62% of us are smiling while we're going through those (laughs) spreadsheets. A record 62% of us have never been more pumped about our profession. Check a record 62% of us are high-fiving over fax (laughs) machines. Now, what is it? Is it free come kombucha perks like that in the canteen i don't know is that what it is jack is it the new pet bereavement policy that hr offered is it the new ceviche wednesdays that everyone's so excited about <laughs> nobody's <laughs> excited about. i think mean, people are excited about ceviche no, wednesdays it's none of those hr perks yet he's a core reason for job satisfaction it came down to one word flexibility flexibility an interesting nugget from the report that nick and i noticed employees that are 100 back in the office They're not as happy as those that have a flexible situation. But here's the key. Employees who are 100% remote are also less happy than those with flexibility in the office. The workers that are most satisfied with their jobs are the ones who get to come in some days and work from home other days. The most satisfied workers are the ones with flexibility. But Yetis, this survey was taken six months ago in November before the mass layoffs happened to us. So Jack and I are looking at it and we're thinking, uh, what comes next. And it's not Ceviche Wednesdays. <laughs> <laughs> Although we all want it to be. So Jack, what's the takeaway for our buddies over in the workforce? The next era of work is the big stay. The big stay. Yet he's the big stay is the idea that unlike all that job hopping that happened during the pandemic, right now you are staying put. After years of upheaval, change, and turnover in the workplace, people are going to stay in the role that they have right now. And here's why we think we're going to see the big stay. Because over the last couple of years, first, we had the great resignation. Those who hated their jobs took the pandemic as the opportunity to finally leave and try out something new. And then over the last year, we've seen major layoffs. So people are in jobs they like more and have extra reason to be grateful for that job right now. Exactly. Now, Yetis, let's add in that new data that job satisfaction is at a record high. And what does that mean, Jack? It means you're probably going to stay in the job you have right now. And that is why we think the next big trend in work is going to be the big stay. From the great resignation to the big stay. And now a word from our sponsor, Athletic Greens. Yetis, last week we got a beautiful hunter green box from Athletic Greens right on our doorstep. They sent it to us because they're the sponsors of the show. But here's the funny thing. Jack and I already knew about AG1 because we've had it in our houses for years. AG1 is a powerful daily supplement that packs a whole bunch of punch. This thing's got 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients in one thing. Nick and me? Both of our wives, we make it part of our morning ritual. Yeah, first thing, sun's still rising. We toss a scoop of AG1 into a sleek AG1 bottle. You add some water, you shake it up, and you fill your belly right first thing every day. Yeah, like Tom Cruise and cocktail every morning. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's got the prebiotics. It's got the probiotics. It may even have postbiotics, <laughs> but legally we're not allowed to say that. We start every day with AG1, the daily supplement, and you should too. Besties, if you're looking for a simpler and cost-effective supplement routine, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash boy. That's athleticgreens.com slash T-B-O-Y. Check it out. For our third and final story, Vice Media just declared bankruptcy. Of all the new media failures this year, Vice is the biggest one. Okay, Jack, how about we play a little, a little, I know you like trivia, but how about we play a little word association game? You ready? I'll try it out. <laughs> all right, here we go. All right, when I say edgy, what are you thinking? Vice. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. 
Vice is always described as the edgy startup media company that was a unicorn worth $5.7 billion. Yeti's Vice is the media company that would interview a skateboarder in a Filipino prison. <laughs> Vice is the media company that would do an expose about Russian bear fighting. Vice is the media company that would go undercover in a Chuck E. Cheese ball pit. And thanks to that edgy reputation, in 2017, at Vice's height, they had a rules-breaking journalism division, their own in-house ad agency, and their own video studio. They also owned Refinery29. But then Vice's growth slowed, and then Vice's growth flattened, and then Vice started to shrink. So nobody wanted to invest, nobody wanted to lend, and then Vice couldn't IPO either. So today, Vice has gone from a $6 billion valuation to $800 million in debt. So yesterday... Vice declared bankruptcy. Vice will continue operating and publishing while a judge figures out whether it should be sold or whether it should be shut down. It's a serious and sad moment. And it's also rock bottom for the brightest digital media star of an era. And it's part of a trend that we've been seeing with a lot of really bright digital media stars this year. Since the internet, we have seen digital media companies try to disrupt established media companies. For example, Jack, we just saw this with BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed had to shut down their news division. Because BuzzFeed was dependent on Facebook. And a few years ago, we saw this with Quibi, which raised a whole lot of money and then shut down the entire thing. Because they depended on app downloads and we didn't download their app. So Jack and I are looking at the situation here and we're noticing a similarity between BuzzFeed and Vice. Both BuzzFeed and Vice got huge amounts of likes, views, and follows on social media and got venture capital investors very excited. Investors were thrilled. They loved that these companies were getting the likes. But here's the problem. Their social media numbers were huge, but their financial numbers weren't. That is a problem. So Jack, what's the takeaway for our buddies over at Vice Media? Social media success does not equal business success. Yet is the operative word of social media is swipe. But here's the thing, swipes, they aren't dollars. That's why likes usually don't translate to money. So when we look at the digital media companies that are struggling right now, it tends to be the ones that depended on social media. But successful digital media companies that have survived and even thrived, they did not depend on social media. That's the key. Instead, they found a way into your existing habits, like your email newsletters, your podcasts, your YouTube views. They stayed lean while they earned your daily habits. So the operative word of social media, it is swipe. People swipe. And, and then they move on. That's why social media success does not equal business success. Jack, can you whip up the takeaways for us for T-Boy Tuesday? Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is already off to piping hot sales after debuting on Friday last week. Yeti's one video game will make more money than the last three Star Wars combined. For our second story, more Americans are satisfied with their jobs right now than at any point in the last 35 years. Yeah, the great resignation, it's being replaced by the big stay. And our third and final story is Vice Media. They just declared bankruptcy. It's a huge come down from a once mighty valuation. Social media success does not equal business success. Now time for the best fact yet. This one sent in by Yvonne and Daria from lovely Santa Clara, California. You know when you sometimes say you have a gut feeling to do something? Gut feeling. Like this takeaway is a really good takeaway. It's a gut feeling. Well, a gut feeling is a real biological thing. Yeah, get this, Yetis. The neurons in your brain, they tell your body how to behave. The neurons in your brain can tell your arm to move, for example. So you've got 100 billion neurons in your head, but it turns out you have 500 million neurons in your your stomach. So there's a lot more neurons in your brain, but there's still a lot of neurons in your gut. Like if you're feeling something in your gut, yeah, that's the neurons speaking. You're not always going to feel something in your gut. No, not always. Not always. Good point. You're usually going to feel stuff in your brain. But sometimes you're going to get a gut feeling because you have a gut feeling. Yetis, whether you are a Liam, a Noah, an Olivia, or an Emma, you look fantastic today. Hit us up at T-BoyPod today to tell us what TV-inspired baby names you should be hearing. We want to know what TV baby names are we missing in the top 10 because we know there are some out there, Logan. There are some out there. The year you were born, was it Chuck, as in Chuck Norris? Was it Hasselhoff, as in David Hasselhoff? Or was it Topanka? If you know. You know. Yeah, no. Hit us up at T Boy Pod and Nick and I will see you tomorrow. Can't wait. Hey. 
And before we go, happy birthday to Yeti Cat Smith down in lovely Los Angeles. And happy 17th birthday to Carson Hall in Cincinnati. And Matt the Wongatron Wong, happy birthday in Toronto, Canada. Happy birthday to Jesper over in Seville, Spain. And Mark Parker, enjoy that birthday in your Belinda, California. Happy 10th birthday to Shyla Dorsey in Landrum, South Carolina. And a congratulations to Kiana and Ken Say, who are graduating from Park Vista Community High School. And congratulations to Dr. Quay Va from Denton, Texas, who's graduating from North Texas U. And Jack, stick this up on the fridge. Luke Sana Gonzalez was just named the Teacher of Excellence with an award in Irvine, California. And we just want to shout out John, Jericho, and Jace, who are listening with their dad on the way to school in St. Louis, Missouri. Pull over and get these guys a milkshake. They're on their way to school. I don't think that's a good call. Yeah, get them too. <laughs> and to anyone else who celebrated something today, make it a team. Celebrate the wins. This is Jack. I own stock of Netflix. <laughs> and it's not because of the ceviche. Don't you even try. <laughs> Let me do it. I hope we can do it. <laughs> By the way, Nick, can I just quickly say what a great idea it was for you to take a picture with a fake person under her arms? Oh, it was so funny that that worked. It Rachel did it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the comments are hilarious. People are like, I'm looking at the hands and it looks fake, but it's not somebody, clear it's fake. I forgot. Said, somebody said after a close look at Nick's hand placement, yeah. I've determined Timmy is fake. <laughs> my, my favorite comment still is the, whether he's fake or real, there's a little Timmy in all of us. <laughs> <laughs>